Hello everyone, this is Kartik. In this video, we're going to talk about disjoint set data structures and an interesting problem called quantity of strings. This video will be a follow-up to the previous blog and the videos I made about disjoint set data structures. So if you haven't watched the previous videos or read the blog, make sure that you give them a look. For the current video, let's get started with the problem quantity of strings. Now, as usual, I'll recommend you to read it on your own. Now the problem says that you are given with a different kind of alphabet, some different language that has an alphabet of size M. So in that alphabet, there are M characters. Like in English, there are 26 characters A to Z. In the new language, there are M characters. The goal of the problem is to count a particular type of strings. So among all the n length strings that are possible with this alphabet you have to find out which or how many strings exist such that every substring of their n length string every k length substring is a palindrome it's a bit hard to digest so pause the video think about what exactly the problem wants to say here so i'll give you a good example here so what the problem wants to say is if you had a string consisting of n characters c1, c2, so until cn minus 1, cn. So let's say this is the n length string. Each of the character is belonging to the alphabet size m. Now every k length substring of this c1 to cn should be a palindrome and then you should count this string. So a brute force solution is find out every n length string that is possible then see which of these every k length substring is a palindrome and count all such strings. So hope that makes sense. Now let's take a look at the examples. So 1 1 1 n is 1 the alphabet size is 1 and k is also 1. So make every one length string and in every one length string, every substring of length one should be a palindrome. So here it's only one possible string, which is A, assuming that the alphabet of size one is A. Think about the other one, five to four. So here you have to think about every five length string and your alphabet is of size two. So maybe A and B and every four length string should be a palindrome. So only two possibilities are trip, uh, 5 times A and 5 times B. Nothing else is possible because you have to make a 4 length palindrome and then another 4 length palindrome here. This should be a palindrome and this should also be a palindrome. So this is the only possible thing. Pause the video, try to think of a solution. If the problem is not clear, leave a comment and I will try to help you out. But for now, let's move to the solution part. I'll try to explain it in a bit, uh, a bit, and then we'll jump to the solutions. So let's say our string S is with the characters C1, C2, C3, some CK, and then some CN minus one and CN. Let us say this is a string that should be counted. So S should be counted if and only if C1 to CK is a palindrome. C1 to CK should be a palindrome. C2 to CK minus 1 is a palindrome. Sorry, CK plus 1 is a palindrome. Every K length string in this exact N length string should be a palindrome. Similarly, C3 to C1 plus 2, you get the idea. I don't need to write it for everything. Right. So let's try to take the first necessity condition for counting a string. C1 to CK is a palindrome. That means C1 should be, has to be equal to CK. That means C2 has to be equal to CK minus 1. C3 has to be equal to CK minus 2. So on. Right? You get the idea c of i has to be equal to c of k minus i plus 1 and that goes on for every i less than equal to k this is cool 
we get a lot of conditions out of it c1 equal to ck so whenever you are let's say we try to construct all the valid strings that need to be counted you will be making sure that these conditions are followed all of these conditions let's see what conditions do we get from the second one so there is another necessary condition for if a string has to be counted that c2 to ck plus 1 needs to be palindrome that means c2 has to be equal to ck plus 1 which means c2 has to be equal to ck sorry c3 has to be equal to c of k which means c4 has to be equal to c of a minus 1 and again you get the idea but if you look at the number one thing and the number two thing you get more such conditions the more conditions that form because of the first and the second conditions are that not only c1 has to be equal to ck c1 is also going to be equal to c3 because that is also equal to ck that means c2 is equal to ck minus 1 and c2 is also equal to ck plus 1 that means ck minus 1 and ck plus 1 have to be same so if you keep doing this you will get way many conditions on the character on their own and based on that we are going to come up with some solution so now what i will do is i will try to pick one character out of the m digits i have in this alphabet m characters m m size alphabet i will pick one of them and assign it to c1 so i have m options for c1 but anything and everything that is equal to c1 like ck and i believe c3 any such equality conditions will make all of those characters to be the same as c1 so once you had m options for c1 there are a lot of other characters that get assigned the same character so we have n m options for c1 and everything that is equal to c1 now we we'll look for the next character that is not equal to c1 and then again we'll have m options that can be assigned to that person that character in the string but everything that is also equal to that will be same as the let's say ci is not equal to c1 ci is not equal to c1 i have m options to assign to ci but whatever other character is equal to ci that will get assigned the same character so what this is doing is there is a set of characters that are all equal to c1 a set of characters that are all equal to c1 let me write that down set of indices in the string that should all be equal to the first character then all of them will be assigned the same value then assuming that ci is not equal to c1 or does not belong to this set i will get a set of indices in the string that should all be equal to ci Similarly, let's say tj is not equal to either of c1 or ci, then we will get a set of indices that are all equal to cj and for each of this set of characters, they can be assigned any value but all of them have to be the same. Again for this, assign any value but all of them have to be the same. So we have m options here for the first set, m options for the second set, if there are more sets, we will have again m options, m options and since this these are going to be disjoint and you can apply any digit or any alphabet character here then you can apply any of them here these are going to multiply together in the possibilities so m uh, assuming there are five such different sets in my n length string that can be distinct from each other you'll have m to the perfect assign any character to the first set assign any character to the second set so on only problem that is left is how do I make these sets? How do I get all the people who, are, who need to be equal to C1? How do I get all the people who need to be equal to C2? So on. Very easy. Do a brute force and use a disjoint set union data structure to make sets based on the k length palindromes. So, what I'm going to do is I will take for every k length string from C1 to Cn, I'll take a k length substring from C1 to Ck. Based on that, I'll make a set that first and kf are belong to the same set. Second and k minus 1 belong to the same set. I'll keep doing a union. So I'll make n sets initially. Make sets, make n sets in the disjoint set union data structure. And based on this k-length palindrome condition for every k-length substring within this n-length string, 
I'm going to do unions wherever two values need to be equal. And at the end, I will have X number of disjoint sets in my data structure. For each of these X sets, I will have M possibilities that I can assign them and my answer will become M to the power X. As simple as that. If you have any doubts, leave a comment. Try to pause the video, try to digest the solution. I'll start with the implementation if you have doubts. Mostly they should be cleared while we are implementing it. If not, I'm always available in YouTube comment section. Happy to help there. So let's go to the implementation now. I've already read N, M and K. There is only one test case for every input. This is the disjoint set union we implemented, disjoint set data structure we implemented in the previous video. And I've borrowed A to the power B modulo M from CP algorithms. Let's try implementing it now. So I have N, M and K. I will make, let's make a disjoint set DS now. Sets for, sets for N length, palindrome. Let's just call it a DSU for today. And then the DSU can simply be integers because I will denote C1 as uh, basically C0 as 0, C1 as 1, so on. So DSU dot make set send in the element as item. So I have n sets now now for every k length substring integer k So my substring starts at 0, the one that I'm looking at, starts at 0, okay, fine. it should end at wherever it's sub k. Let me go all the way to n or should I go to till it's valid, I think it, I should go till it's valid. So n minus, hmm, last is going to be n minus 1, okay, fine, n minus k, it's fine if I go slightly up and then add a condition for break, that's okay. Actually, that's not okay. Let me go till, so let's think, in fact what makes it easier is, let me do it from 1 to n plus 1, that is 1 to n, I will not do the 0 indexing, then substring starts at 1, given that ck is the last person, my k length substring should start from c of n minus k, phase 2 then Cn, Cn minus 1, Cn minus 2 is 3, so n minus k plus 1. This is fine. Oh god. Let's just quickly look at it. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If k n equal to 5 and k equal to 2, this is the last one. So string should start at 4. That would mean 5 minus 2 is 3 plus 1, correct? Fine. Now for every k length substring, I know the start, the end has to be all the way till k correct, uh, k characters. So, what I'll do is, I'll run two pointers this way. start of the k length substring is this 
and end will simply be Since these two need to be equal starting and ending because it's a palindrome the start of the string should be equal to the end of the string then start plus plus and minus minus these two should be equal so on keep you uh, doing union on them this should be fine correct so now i have disjoint sets i just need to see how many sets are there m to the power now the number of sets i have that is going to be my answer that's it so let's see how many sets I have. What I'll do for that is let's just maintain a set for unique representatives I've seen. I'll find the representative, I'll put it in the set, then whatever the size of the set is going to be the number of disjoint sets I have. This should be an, actually a variable I already maintain for the number of sets. I'm maintaining the ranks, I believe, but not the... Or am I maintaining the number of sets also? Maybe not. Anyway, that should be okay. Not adding much to the complexity. Unique representatives dot insert then what i'll insert is dsu dot find i then my final answer is going to be c out bin for a to the power b so number of disjoint sets i have to the power the set size so number of disjoint sets i have is unique representative dot size Actually, m to the power whatever I have. So, and modulo 10 to the power 7. Cool. Let's try compiling it. Probably won't work. Worked. Cool. So answer is two. Looks fine. It's working on two test cases. What else could you ask for? Let's try submitting it. If it works, you guys have to like, share, and subscribe the video. If it does not work, please still do the same if you would like to see more from the series and if you are benefiting from all the explanations and the coding I am doing here. Oh, it got accepted. So please do sh like, share and subscribe and let me know if this is useful. I will keep coming with more videos from for the series. Thanks and thanks for watching. Bye.